Hello everyone, my name is Jerry and welcome to my channel San Pedro Mastery. A question I get quite often is, can you start San Pedro or peyote from seeds in the winter? Most definitely. It is very simple and in this video I will show you how I personally do it. Here are some trays of cactus seedlings that I started from seeds about 3 weeks ago. I will grow them indoors for about 5 to 6 months. And then when comes the spring, I will open the film and move them outside where they will toughen up and carry on growing. There are a few thousand plants here, as each of these trays contains about 1000 plants. But the tips I will give you in this video can be applied to any quantity, even as low as 20 seeds. All you will need is a window with light and possibly, but not necessarily, a cheap fluorescent bulb and a cheap heating mat. This is my winter setup, or should I specify my indoor winter setup downstairs, as my apartment is on two floors and I also have another setup upstairs. Each setup is different because the natural light I have downstairs is different from the one I have upstairs. This setup downstairs is north facing, which means it does not get direct sun. On the other hand, the setup upstairs is south facing, which means it does get direct sun. And whether or not your plants receive direct sun will dictate whether or not you need to use a heating mat, but I will get more into that later on. For a start, let me explain how this setup is put together. This room, by the way, used to be a small terrace, but windows have been installed to convert it into another room. There is a lot of light coming in, but it is indirect light. The sun does not come in during the winter month. However, the sun reflects itself on the buildings which are on the opposite side of the street and what I do get here is a lot of ambient light, especially in the morning. In the afternoon, the sun does not hit directly the building opposite and because of that, this room becomes somewhat darker. When you grow San Pedro in the winter, you should always make the most of the natural light you have. The indirect light I get from these windows is almost enough by itself to satisfy the cacti's needs. But there are times in the day when they need more light, and this is why I've installed these fluorescent tubes. These tubes are set on a timer. I have them programmed to switch on automatically in the morning and switch off automatically in the evening so that the plants get 14 hours of light a day. Of course, if you don't have a timer, you can switch the lamps on and off manually. But come on, these timers are just worth a few dollars or euros and they will make your life easier. If you go to work every day, you will have nothing to do. Just check on the plants every now and then. However, I am at home during the day, which means I can manually disconnect the lights whenever I think the plants are getting enough natural light, which in this room is most mornings. I say most mornings and not all mornings, because winter has many cloudy days. Yes, even here in Barcelona. And when the sky is dark, the seedlings will love the extra light from the fluorescent tubes. Like I mentioned earlier, each of these trays contains about a thousand plants. Let me get close. I don't know if you can see the seedlings, if the camera will focus. They are three week old and still very tiny. Each tray is a different strain or species. If you want to learn more about what kind of tray I recommend, I suggest you watch my video How to choose the right tray to grow cacti from seeds. Underneath these trays, there are some eating mats. And underneath the mats, some insulation foam. Whether or not you need lights and heating mats, we will discuss later on in this video. I use cheap foldable garden tables. These will typically cost you $30 or euros in supermarkets or garden stores. But I wanted this to reach the level of the windows, so that the tray gets a maximum of light. And the tables were way too low. So I used two tables. One underneath, and another one on top with the legs folded up. And in between, as a spacer, some large plastic pots. These are actually very strong and will not break with the weight. Feel free to do something similar if you want, but make sure it is all super stable and will support the weight. These large trays are quite heavy. Also, if you have children, keep in mind they may end up playing around it and could hurt themselves if the whole thing was to collapse. The main purpose of the metal frame that you see here is to carry the lights. Although it is also useful for other things, such as hanging a power strip, 
or hanging a sheet of yellow sticky plastic over there. This, by the way, is meant to control fungus gnats. They are the only type of insects that pose a threat to very young cactus seedlings. And there is one of my videos dedicated to this topic. I did not buy this frame, I built it myself, reusing elements from the metal frame of an old greenhouse, which I reassembled in a different manner than it was meant to be. And these two grills serving as light supports were part of an IKEA storage rack. I like to reuse stuff as it's free and it saves the planet. The lights are T5 fluorescent bulbs. Of course, you must make sure that the color temperature of these bulbs is right. You want about 6500K, that they are bright enough, and that the distance from the soil is correct. You want 30 to 45 centimeters or 12 to 18 inch. There is one of my videos explaining all this in detail. It's called the Growing San Pedro and Peyote and the Fluorescent Lights. Some people will swear by LED lamps or LED lamps. I am currently experimenting with LED lamps on some San Pedro seedlings. And I will let you know the outcome in a few months from now, but I doubt they can match T5 fluorescent bulbs when it comes to growing San Pedro from seeds. I think the people who swear by LEDs for cactus seedlings are people who have number one, not tried fluorescent T5s, as they are substantially more efficient than T8s or T12s, and number two, not used tubes powerful enough. You see, T5s come in different wattage. The 4 foot long or 120 cm one should be 54 watt, and the 2 foot long or 60 cm one should be 24 watt. I have friends who grow cannabis, and they have reported that fluorescent T5s give better looking and stronger cannabis seedlings than using LED lamps. These lamps are specifically designed for growing plants, because they come with their own reflectors. The T5 lamps that are designed for lighting garage or warehouses normally don't have reflectors. These reflectors were great with the grills I have, as they allow me to just lay them flat on top of the grills. They are loose, and this allows me to position them exactly as I want. I can move my trays the way I want and readjust my lights accordingly so that there is proper light coverage. I could have also hung them from the ceiling, but that would have meant drilling some holes into that nice ceiling. And also, it is not easy to change the position of the lights when you hang them from the ceiling. You can see that the tubes overlap in the center. Ideally, that should not happen. But the combined length of two of these tubes is longer than the table and frame I have, which is why they overlap here in the center. It's no big deal, just that the tray in the center will get double the light. So what you can do in such a case is keep an eye on the center tray and when it looks like the plants are about to get red, then you can rotate the trays. Very often when you build a new setup for your plants, you will find some things that are not optimum. This is due to trays, lights and heating mats all being in different sizes. Maybe it was all fitting perfectly when you originally purchased them, but then you added more trays and now you will have to improvise a new solution. In the case of these lights being too long, I could also get two shorter tubes to replace two of the long ones. That would make them fit in lengths and also that would allow me to align them perfectly in a straight line so that the trays get better light coverage. At the moment, you can see that the lights are not properly aligned and this is something we'll have to sort out soon. Another minor flaw with my setup is that the height of the tubes is non-adjustable. But there are some workarounds. The first one is to drop the table. The other one is to raise the entire steel structure. Dropping the table could be achieved with shorter spacers between the two tables. In this case, there would be smaller pots, which would lower the level of the trays. But instead, I went for the other solution, which is to raise the entire metal structure. And I've accomplished that by placing wooden boards underneath the legs of the structure. Here, there are some heating mats. You can buy some really cheap heating mats, no make from China but I prefer to pay the price and go for quality products. Simply because it's electrical and it can get in contact with water. I would not want a short circuit that could start a fire. Underneath the mats, there are some pieces of insulation foam. These are a must have. You can get these in DIY shops. They come in large square pieces, but you can cut them to suit your needs. They prevent the heat from escaping from underneath the mats. Like this, all the heat goes to the soil. And by the way, you only need to warm up the soil, where the roots are. You don't need to warm up the entire room. 
which is why using mats is considerably cheaper than heating the entire room. The mats I use are 4 feet long and 16 inch wide. That's 120 by 40 centimeters. And this size of mat has an electricity consumption of 60 watts. Now these T5 fluorescent tubes are also 4 feet long or 120 centimeters and they consume 54 watts each. So in theory, it costs about the same for lighting as for heating. I say in theory, because in most cases, the mats will come on and off to reach a set temperature. I use a thermostat specifically designed for heating mats. It can control several mats, you don't have to buy a thermostat for every mat you have. It gets its temperature reading from this cable here. At the end of the cable is a temperature sensor. It's a small metal rod which I place just underneath the mats, but on top of the insulation foam. The thermostat is currently set at 28 degrees Celsius, that's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. If I press on the button here, you can see the temperature is set at 28. The mats are currently on. And you can see that because the light next to heating is on, and the temperature is rising. As soon as the temperature reaches 28 degrees, then this light comes off, and the mat will start cooling off. A couple of minutes later, the temperature will start to drop too much, and the mats will switch back on again. So the mats will constantly be on and off again, and therefore each mat is going to consume less than 60 watts. For a mat to consume 60 watts, it would need to be on non-stop, which is the case when you don't use a thermostat. Of course, if the temperature of your room is very cool, then the mats will be constantly on, and in that case you won't even need a thermostat, you can just plug the mats directly into the wall. This temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, or 82 degrees Fahrenheit, is ideal for cacti that recently germinated and are just a few weeks old. When they are older, they will prefer a warmer temperature. If you have not sterilized your soil, you will have to remove the transparent film. Remember to always remove the film progressively by punching holes in it over the course of several days. If on the other hand you have sterilized the soil, then you can keep them enclosed much longer, but you will need to check on them often preferably every day, to make sure you don't have a problem with white mold, which tends to appear with warmer temperatures and a lot of humidity. Next to this large setup, I have a smaller setup with all the plants. These San Pedro's were grown outside from seeds this summer, on non-sterilized soil and exposed to the elements. Now I am putting them here so that they grow a bit more. Open trays require a bit more effort than the trays covered in film, because I have to water them. I don't water them right here so as not to make a mess. Instead, I drop them onto a larger tray and I water them from underneath. Frequency of watering? As soon as the soil is fully dry. That will depend on how deep the soil is and also how warm the soil is. In this particular case, the soil is very shallow, about 2 cm or 3 quarter of an inch. And the soil is quite warm because this particular heating mat is working at full power. It is not connected to the thermostat. As such, I have to water these two trays every other day. By the way, you may have noticed some of the plants have died in this tray here. My guess would be a virus transmitted by root-to-root -root contact, brought by a biting insect. That's a downside of growing plants outdoors, although this happens rarely. Later on today, I'll dig out the dead plants and about one inch of soil around them, and that should solve the problem. Just like on the other setup, the trays are raised so that they are level with the windows. I use the frame from an old desk with some wire trays for spacing. All this is old stuff that I have reused, so it cost me absolutely nothing. There is a heating mat, but no insulation foam underneath, simply because this plastic shelf here is hollow, and it keeps the heat from the mat in a similar manner. The light is also a T5, but set up on a support. The legs were too long, so I had to cut them down. This kit comes from Rooted, a UK company, and from what I understand, this system is being discontinued. But you can get similar kits from other makes. This one works, but it is very fiddly. It's easy to get a bad connection. I cannot say I'm satisfied with it. On the other hand, I am very satisfied with the mats, which are also from Rooted. Both the lights and the mats will come on and off at the same time, because they are connected to the same timer. This one over there on the wall. All the electricity from that room comes from that timer. 
And before you ask, the air compressor that you see has got nothing to do with the plants. It's something I use for working on cars. By the end of the day, when the lights come off, you will find the air in the room is very humid and does not smell too fresh. What I like to do is open the window, as this will change the air, remove the humidity, and most importantly, drop the temperature. Cacti love a temperature drop at night. This stimulates growth. You just have to remember to close the window again in the morning when the lights and mats come back on. When you have the plant still covered up in transparent film, then the whole setup is pretty much maintenance free. It is a self-contained and self-sustaining ecosystem that requires no action from you at all for up to about six months. You will have nothing to do apart from opening and closing the windows at night, taking a quick look at the plants on a daily basis, and switching the lamps off when there is enough natural light coming from the outside. And all that is optional. You can perfectly skip it if you have to go to work or if you have little free time. Most likely the plants will be okay. With the lights and heating mats coming on and off automatically, there is little for you to do. If you can afford some minimum interaction with the grow, this will be beneficial to the plant's well-being. The one most important thing you should do is actually passive interaction. It is just taking a look at the plants on a daily basis so that you can act early if ever something goes wrong. Now you might be wondering, how would all these plants do with just ambient light, without the fluorescent tubes? Well, they would definitely grow slower and probably will grow a bit thinner. However, it might work, at least for the first few months of their lives. This said, you will probably need eating mats. I did mention earlier in this video that I was also growing seedlings upstairs in my living room next to a south facing window. There I can grow seedlings without lights and without eating mats. The sun reaches them only a few hours a day, during which I have to put some green shading on top of the tray, so that the young seedlings don't get burnt. And most importantly, so that the temperature inside the tray does not raise too much. You see, when the sun rays hit the tray covered with cling film, it will work just like a greenhouse, and the temperature inside the tray will be considerably higher than the room temperature. You can check the temperature by placing a thermometer on top of the tray, but protecting it from direct sunlight. So, by growing an enclosed tray of seedlings in front of a sunny window, you can do without artificial lights and heating mats, which means you will have zero electricity consumption. However, you will need to be present if the sun is to heat directly the seedlings. You must cover the plant with green shadings or a rag when the sun hits the tray. And when the sun moves away, then you should remove the shading so that the plants get enough light. With this setup, the plants are likely to grow slower, due to the fact that the temperature of the soil is going to be too low when the sun is not directly on it. Although this can be remedied by using a heating mat with a timer coming on when the sun is not on the tray. And the timer will need to get reset very often due to the position of the sun constantly changing throughout the winter. So a sunny window can be a zero running cost option. Also zero investment as you won't need to buy lights on a mat. However, it will require you to be there to manually cover and uncover the tray. Also to check on the plants more often as the temperature cannot be easily controlled and the growth may be slower. These I just leave as is during the winter. They seem to cope well with just a few hours of sun a day and I don't worry about the soil temperature on these. I will leave them there for the whole of the winter so that they gain some strength before I place them outdoors for the rest of their lives. I do not keep all the plants in my living room as those could possibly etiolate during the winter. With smaller plants, etiolation is not a problem, and if it was to happen, it can often correct itself. In this video, we've seen how you can grow cacti from seeds in front of a window during the winter. We've seen an example of windows with only ambient light, like this north-facing window downstairs. We've also seen windows with direct sunlight, like the south-facing window I have upstairs. Here I'm growing a few thousand plants, but if you are only growing 20 seeds, then the same rules apply. Although if you are growing just 20 seeds, then this probably would not justify the cost of buying and running a fluorescent tube and a heating mat. 
In that case, a partly sunny window would be your best bet, as you would not need artificial lighting nor a mat. If you have a window with ambient light, then you should really try to get a heating mat. Another option, if you use a portable radiator to heat up your room, would be to place the radiator close to your plants. If you are going to need artificial light and a heating mat, then you could buy the shortest possible fluorescent tube and a small mat. And that would probably be enough to grow 100 to 500 seeds. So you might as well start with that many seeds instead of just 20. One option I did not cover in this video is what happens if you do not have a window at all. Can you still grow seeds during the winter without a window? Absolutely. But you will need a lamp and a mat. Sometimes a single T5 tube will be enough. Some other times a second one will grant you better results. Typically a single T5 is all the seedlings need for the first two to three months. Then their need for light starts to be higher and that second tube may help. Bear in mind we're talking no window here, total obscurity. If you have a window, then you will not need a second tube. All the tips I've given you in this video should help you to successfully grow San Pedro from seed during the winter month. However, you do need to make sure that you are indeed getting San Pedro seeds. A lot of the seeds on the market that are advertised as San Pedro are in fact not San Pedro. This is explained in my video why most San Pedro seeds are a ripoff. Make sure you watch it if you haven't done that already. There is no point in getting a great winter setup ready and successfully grow cacti from seeds to find out many months later that you have been growing a different species of cactus. The San Pedro seeds that I sell are guaranteed to be San Pedro. Not only have I picked them up personally from a properly identified San Pedro, but before that I also unpollinated the flowers and then isolated them in pollination bags to make sure there is no unwanted cross-pollination done by insects. I sell these seeds in quantities ranging from 20 to 5,000 seeds. To find out how to buy them, check my video where to buy San Pedro seeds and seedlings. I hope this video has shed some light on how to grow San Pedro and peyote from seeds in the winter, although a lot of the information here could also be applied to the spring and summer if you are not able to grow your plants outside. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like. And if you have any question, please write it down in the comment section below. You may get a reply from me, or if not, from a different viewer. Thanks for watching and I will see you again very soon for more tutorial videos on how to grow the San Pedro and peyote. Bye for now.